<coughs> Howdy y'all, welcome on back to the channel. I've got a bit of a change up for you here today since my bass boat has been in the shop and uh, getting the trolling motor and some other stuff worked on. Uh, the old silver bullet, she, uh, she awaits my presence. But I'm getting ready to go to the deer lease to film some videos for you guys and I thought that I would do a video on my camp knives. And today's feature film is sponsored by Guggen Squad Minis and Micros. Folks, we just launched these uh, micro crankbaits, hard baits uh, for panfish and even bass. Um, and these mini frogs, OMG killer at the pond scene. I will be taking these to, uh, to deer camp to go fish some of the ponds. First of all, I have collected knives since I was a kid. This is something I'm uh, passionate about uh, because my, my dad used to take me to flea markets when I was a kid. He'd let me pick out a knife and I started just collecting these little pocket knives and uh, you know, just, just cheap little knives. It was so, so fun. And over the years, um, as I got more into the outdoors and, and becoming more of a, a total woodsman, I guess you could say, I got into what I call camp knives. Let's get into the knives that everyone should have, the Moras. Uh, these specifically are the Mora Companions. Um, this knife right here, folks, is fantastic for the money. And I keep these in the ATV, keep them in, uh, like in drawers here at the house. Um, you know, they're just great in the truck. Just something pretty cheap. If you lose it, it's not going to break the bank, um, but it's really effective. It's not a full tang knife, meaning you don't have the spine that runs all the way through the grip of the knife, but it's still really solid. You could do a ton with this and you're most likely not going to break it. And you could buy like three or four of these for the price of some of these other ones I'm going to show you. Pretty decent steel on it, carbon steel. So you can use this for uh, striking a fire steel, scraping, shavings, making feather sticks and stuff like that. That Scandi edge is pretty nice. Some might argue that is a, a saber grind or a high saber grind. It's got this little cheap plastic sheath, but it works really great. Uh, this is actually what OSG uses when we're out doing camping as well. I actually don't know the model name of this, but it's another Mora. It's very similar to my Mora 2000, which is the knife I wear on my hip when I'm fishing. That's probably the one I get asked about the most. You know, we're talking 30, 40 bucks for these knives. Not, not very expensive at all. Then we'll go right up to another Mora in this uh, beautifully done custom sheath by Red Rhino Customs. Uh, he's made a few of these for me. I got these a few years ago. Love them. They're so good. But um, I, I got him to do one for this Mora Bushcrafter. And this is a, a high carbon steel knife with a really good spine. Comes with a great spine out of, of, of the package. And you want a really good 90 degree spine when you're, um, when you're using it for camp stuff. So you can uh, easily scrape woods and, and process things. Uh, again, got that Scandi edge on there. And that knife does really well. Um, just really light in the hand, love it. Next up, I do I don't like using this knife. Uh, it's actually one of my least favorite knives. I don't like the uh, blade shape or the the edge on it, the steel. I don't I don't really like anything about it. But it it's means something to me because I got it in high school. This was uh, probably my first I guess if you want to consider a camp knife purchase. It's uh, it's the K bar. It's got a clip point on it. Um, I don't even know if they still use these in, in the Marine Corps or not, but uh, that is the K-Bar. Had to have it back in the day, playing paintball, airsoft. Wanted to look cool, got it, got one of those. Eventually used it in some uh, outdoor situations, but hated it. Uh, next we'll go up to the Cold Steel, known for making some really cheap knives, but they got some pretty cool stuff out there. Uh, this knife was given to me by the Air Force Air Rifles uh, team and uh, it's actually not a bad knife um, I, I like the, the thickness supposedly this is like a 
Navy SEAL training knife or something like that. I, I don't know that to be 100% true, but makes it sound cool. Definitely looks like some sort of tactical uh, knife, but you know, great little hog sticker if you wanted to use it for that or just playing around at camp. Decent little grip on that baby too. Well, that textured uh, rubber grip. Uh, and now we'll move on up the line. Most of these from here have leather sheaths. This right here is a Bark River Fox River. And this was uh, the first, I would say, more expensive knife that I purchased. Um, I bought this as a gift for a friend that was getting married. I thought, you know, he was a big hunter. And I was like, oh man, what's something really cool? Uh, that I could get like a, a nice heirloom item and uh, These bark rubber knives popped up. I purchased the Fox River. I felt I fell in love with the grip I almost didn't even give it to him. I was like this feels so good in the hand um, So it's kind of got that squared off grip. It's about four inches and it is uh, this one is in CPM 154 steel which is stainless uh, perfect hunting knife uh, with that stainless steel, it's got a good belly on it. So you could do a really good skinning, you could process game with it as well. And all the Bark River knives, which I have quite a few of them that I'll show you, they're in convex grinds, which uh, puts a lot of meat, a lot of steel behind that final bevel of, of that, that edge, that knife. So it gives you a, gives you a lot of cutting power. Um, you can beat up on these knives a little more and not have to worry about uh, keeping them or keep resharpening them in the field um, but it just really makes for a, a tough edge and it's it's a really natural way to sharpen a knife and there's multiple ways to sharpen uh, different grinds which I can get into in a later video if you guys care at all for that you know a dull knife is a useless knife I keep them I keep them pretty razor next one we'll look at is the Bark River Gunny so this was the second Bark River I got. Love the size of it. It's around four inches. Uh, doesn't have as, as much girth as the uh, Fox River, but again, great little hunter knife. And a very functional bushcrafting knife as well. Uh, it's got a little bit of a cant downward on it. 3V steel. That means you can just really beat the tar out of this knife. It has extreme toughness. And all the Bark River spines are pretty good. Uh, next we'll go to the most popular, the most sold Bark River knife uh, is the Bravo One. So I've got an original Bravo One in uh, bird's eye maple with uh, mosaic pins. That is an absolute beauty and you could go to war with this baby. You could pry open a door. Uh, it is an excellent uh, wood processor. Just chews through wood. It is thicker than any of the other knives I have on this table. I can tell you that. So when you're looking at, looking down this knife, it almost looks like an ax blade. Excellent batoner, uh, but it has decent slicing capability as well. So the thinner a knife is, the better slicing capability it has. The wider it is, to a certain extent, you'll get better splitting for uh, batoning and stuff like that. Um, and speaking of a little thinner, this is the Bark River Bravo 1 LT, which is the light version. Just a really good overall width for uh, being kind of slicey, but also good for uh, splitting, batoning wood, and just durability, toughness, prying, stuff like that. This, uh, this is arguably one of the best outdoor knives that you can own right here. So this would definitely be one on the table, I would say. If you can, if you have the ability to purchase a Bravo one uh, from Bark River, I would definitely get one. And uh, that one's in another, uh, that's a little bit rare wood. I think that's Bacote wood. I'm not sure how you say it, it's real pretty. Next one is probably my favorite knife on this table. Like if I had to take one of these to the woods, for me personally, I think it would be this one. And that's the Bark River Canadian Special in 3V. So, got that really tough 3V steel. It's a swayback. Kind of looks like a willow blade, like you'd see on a spinner bait. Um, you can, it's really great for scraping. You could use that in, in hide as well, kind of scraping out fats and stuff uh, without that, that point digging in to your skin. Um, and I do like that it, 
and it comes up in that little willow shape right there making it great for skinning so processing game and you've still got a good flat edge right here that you can work with wood on so it's just very good overall and I love uh, the grip some people hate this apparently uh, I actually talked to Mike Stewart about this knife and uh, he said this is their least selling knife which I could not believe but um, it's because of the finger grooves some people just hate the finger grooves I love it I have medium sized hands it fits me perfectly I just love the way this blade feels in my hand it feels so natural and feels really good when you flip it over too and it's almost like that finger groove is a choil so I love it some people don't like it um, and another fire steel on this one um, I buy all the fire steels uh, online just get the raw stuff and then I make my own little uh, my little handles for them with my drill press and, and my woodworking stuff here and all these spines are real sharp so uh, gotta keep the spine sharp y'all don't forget about that spine on your your camp knives so you can process woods and throw big chunks of um, steel off your fire steel next one I thought I'd just give it a whirl and go with the Spyderco I love Spyderco pocket knives so much I was like yeah I'll try one of their camp knives they're not really known for it but this is um, the Bradley Bowie Gail Bradley out of Weatherford Texas which is where I played junior college baseball and then migrated to the Texas A&M fishing team but I wonder if I've ever run into him or not my, my roundabout circles but anyway I love the balance of this knife feels great uh, it's got that flat grind on it uh, doesn't have a good spine for processing woods and scraping things typically the spider pocket knives have a, have a fantastic spine but this one actually kind of rounds off the way they ground it uh, has the typical spider co hole in it they put a tiny little hole in there to just say hey I'm a spider co put it in the handle as well with g10 grips g10 feels really great and the balance point on this knife is daggum near perfect so just don't like the v edge on it the v edge is just a little different from the convex uh, the convex has a micro bevel on the end but um it's just different than a v edge and you, you guys can watch all the videos on the different kinds of edges but uh basically the three that you have you've got scandies flat v edge and then you've got convex and this next one is going to be one of those sabers and this this knife is by LT Wright. That dude makes some really good knives. I also like the sheaths. The sheaths are high quality. And, and his knives tend to be a little bit thinner. This is the Genesis. It is just a fantastic little scraper. This spine, the, this guy makes the best spines out of the box that I have seen so far. I haven't experienced that many brands, but this thing will chew, chew through wood. So a little bit different. Grind and oh yeah, this is also one of my favorite steels, A E B L steel. It's a, uh, I believe it's a stainless steel. I've yet to see any corrosion on these, uh, but I got one of those for one of my skinning knives. Loved it, and then decided to get uh, one for the bigger version. Holds an edge really good. Love it. Next one. This is the North Country Everyday Carry Two. If I'm not mistaken in uh, s45 VN which is the newest replacement for L max uh, for Bark River production it's also stainless so making it an excellent knife to uh, carry around camp maybe it gets a little moist maybe you you know clean a deer with it or whatever um, you don't have to, to baby it too much and the edge retention on it is fantastic you can basically get through an entire animal skinning it without having to uh, resharpen it. At least that's how it is on my LMAX knives that um, I use for skinning it. That's been my favorite steel that really holds an edge incredibly. So any of you hunters out there that are looking for a good skinning uh, knife or a good steel to go on your, your skinning knives, I would definitely look at S45 VN and also L Max. I just refuse to get one of those little, you know, replaceable razor dealios. That is that is not for me. Um, I like having a tool that I don't have to have replacement parts for. So 
that is uh, that's just a really good overall knife. Love it for just all things. This is a specific bushcrafting knife. I've shown this one on video uh, when I built a little bushcraft camp down by the river. But this is the Bark River Aurora. The Aurora, it's a fantastic little bushcrafter. Not too wide. It's got the perfect thickness. It doesn't weigh you down. It's not too heavy. You can do drilling tasks if you want to. I uh, love the Coke bottle grip on this thing. Feels fantastic. Um, this one is an A2 steel, which is a very hard steel. Uh, you do have to baby it a little bit with moisture. I keep mine oiled. I, I don't use any like rim oil or anything I would use uh, that has chemicals in it because you know I usually use these knives for food as well. So I use a uh, chef's uh, knife oil or a just olive oil. It seems to work really well and it just chews through wood. Fantastic. Love that knife. If I was doing straight bushcraft, I would probably lean towards that one. And this is the Uper Bravo, the UP Bravo. So it's got that, um, by the way, UP, if you guys haven't watched my uh, smallmouth videos from last year fishing in the UP, uh, just an amazing place. You're basically in camera, Canada, that's that's the upper peninsula of Michigan. Uh, it, it gets very cold, very snowy, and there's some hardcore outdoorsmen that live up there, and that's where Bark River is made. Keeping it real for the folks in the Uper, and then putting that Bravo One handle on there, their most popular handle. It's kind of got that Coke bottle shape, just feels fantastic in the hand. Um, but this is the same blade shape as the Canadian Camp Knife, so you can do that good scraping and um, you know fire processing, wood processing, and uh, I just love this knife. I love it. I use this one probably around the house the most because it's, it's a decent chopper and it's an A2 steel. I've got a couple dings in it, but uh, working them out gradually every time I sharpen it. This is a new favorite of mine, and this is the Bark River Cup. Um, this one's got a little more length on it. It's five and a half inches, pretty close to five and a half inches. It's getting up there in thickness with the Bravo One at the base of the spine, and then you work down to a pretty thin spine. Uh, it almost looks like it'd be in danger of bending if you pr pried really hard with it, but it's 3B steel, so extremely, extremely tough. Great chopper. It's got a um, broadened base to the handle, so you can just grab that uh, little lanyard and then really do some some chopping at the very end of the knife. Uh, just uh, just a great knife for small task and medium big task. Love that knife. Great camp knife. This one I've had for a minute, and it is a, a less expensive knife, but just a good one. This is the SE6. Uh, I believe this is gonna be the longest blade that I've got in here. So six inch blade, 1095 steel, which uh, isn't a super steel, but you know, 1095 knives have been around forever. It's like the 308. It's just proven, it's very, very good, but you do have to keep it oiled, it'll rust. Uh, this one's got a coating on it, so the, the main part of the knife won't rust. The edge ex is exposed and can but you're not gonna be able to get that good wood processing spine with it with that coating. So that's one of the things I don't like about this knife, but just great overall camp knife. It's got a flat grind with a V edge, so it doesn't quite have that, that convex uh, nature to it, but still pretty good. I and mean, it's got a little choil right there if you're doing fine tasks. I do like that about that, but you can chop with it. You can uh, baton. You can do fine tasks, great overall camera, and I got an awesome sheath from it for it as well. This next one, these next two are actually gifts, so little collectibles. So my dad actually got me this one. He saw me getting all these bark rivers, and he, he got me, he got me one for Christmas. So I was pretty excited to see that. That's just uh, that's one of those that I'm a little scared to take to the woods and ding it up pretty bad, uh, but it's pretty cool. That's a bark river marauder first production model so they print the first production model uh, stamp on all those that they do for the first time and this baby would would split you open right here this looks like a, a pirate's knife 
it, but it actually has excellent balance to it. It feels lighter than what it is uh, just because of that. And uh, I don't know, I might slap it on my hip and take it to deer camp and you know, if, if the hogs come at me or maybe a, a mountain lion or something, maybe this will scare them off. They think I'm like an old school pirate in the woods ready to do some swashbuckling. Next one is a gift, like I said, and uh, my buddy Mullet Man actually made this for me. So this isn't even a steel knife. This, this isn't one I'm gonna take out to the woods. Just looks awesome on the, on the office desk. He even put LFG, burned that into, I believe this is Axis Deer, and it actually feels pretty good. It's a good thickness, and he carved that flint out, chip, chipped that flint out himself, and then wa and wax, uh, whatever that is, I don't know, probably, probably, uh, you know, intestines of a, a mountain goat or something, whatever, kind of, that guy get, kills so many animals, he doesn't know what to do with, uh, and then just wrapped it up there um, with that stuff, and it's pretty solid, it, feel, it feels really good, so back in the day, this is what you would be using around camp, and what's pretty interesting is, if you take the Bravo 1, for example, look at the size. He pretty much nailed it on the size. It's almost uh, almost exactly like the like the Bravo one. So shout out to Mullet Man on that. Did a good job. Lastly, it's not a knife, but it will do well at camp. And this is uh, my I think it's Gronfors Gronfors Brook. I butchered that really bad, and I apologize to all all the Swedes out there. Um, but this is a, a Swedish forest axe right here. And it's an excellent little camp tool. Um, you can use the back end. Got to be careful. Don't want to damage it. But you can use that to tamp down some stakes. Uh, obviously, the front is going to chew through um, medium to, to large wood tasks. You could even do some game processing with this. It is that sharp. Um, so, it is, yeah, it's hair, hair popping sharp. So you could... You could actually use this um, to work on game, but I, I probably would not do that. Wrapped it up with some uh, some deer leather on the ends, just to give it a nice nice little feel. And this thing's great. It's a great addition to uh, to carry carry to camp. I like to carry both of these, uh, both a you know a camp knife and an axe, just in case you got to do a little bit bigger task but you got to be careful not to chop your knees off with that thing because it will do it so that y'all is my camp knife collection and now the hardest part is picking one it's it's hard I, I normally take a couple when i go to camp and i like to work with the knives you know see how the edges are different uh, see how the grinds are different and test different steels. That's why I have a variety of steels and I'm I'm starting to To learn what I really like and what's really comfortable for me But I really want to know from from y'all if you had to take one knife to the woods What would it be? Well, let me know down in the comments and I try to buy One knife a month. That's kind of my my rule. I have to kind of limit myself to, to one because it's easy to go crazy um, but just one knife in general, whether it's pocket knife or, you know, skinny knife, camp knife, collectible knife, whatever. I'll just get one a month. And if y'all are interested in what knife I'm buying every month, let me know in the comments. I'll share it on my, uh, my Instagram or my, my TikTok or, or whatever, whatever sort of other social media things are going on. And if you want to see stuff like the Skinners, you know, a whole nother category things let me know in the comments down below but i'm excited to go to deer camp y'all uh i think i'm gonna take i kind of don't want to take old trusty i kind of want to work with one of the new ones maybe maybe the cup maybe we just go with the cub maybe i don't know maybe take the gunny for backup just in case if something happens you never know thanks for hanging with me today and checking out the old knife collection and I guess I'm gonna see you guys at Deer Camp. I got a new mode of transportation toy we're gonna be trying out out there and uh, going after hogs, bass, and maybe checking out some bucks in velvet. So I'll see you guys out there at the least. God bless, see you soon.